Concepts of Motion, by Aristotle, and Galileo. Aristotle, and Galileo, were two of the most important historical figures in physics. They may have opposing views regarding motion, but they both helped science progress. Motion, is defined as the movement, or a change in location of an object over time. It is often described in terms of direction, location, and speed. Aristotle He was the tutor of Alexander the Great. Aristotle's aim was to systematize existing knowledge, just as Euclid had systematized geometry. His systematic approach, became the method from which Western science arose. Galileo He was born the same year as Shakespeare became an advocate of the new theory of the solar system wherein the sun is at the center. He invented the telescope, and made different discoveries on the nature, positions, and motions of heavenly bodies. According to Aristotle, every object has a proper place in the universe. And their motion can either be celestial motion, natural motion, or violent motion. Celestial motion includes motion of the sun, moon, and stars, in perfect circles. The sun, moon, and stars, are formed of perfect, incorruptible substance, called ether, or quintessence, and this motion is different from anything on the earth. Natural motion, was thought to be either straight up, or straight down. Solid objects, or liquids, fall because they seek their natural resting place, which is the center of the earth. Rocks, and boulders, goes down the ground. Air, smoke, and flames, like to rise upwards. This means, heavy things fall to the ground, and very light things rise up in the sky. Violent motion is imposed motion or horizontal motion. It was the result of forces that pushed or pulled. It had an external cause. Objects in their natural resting places could not move by themselves. A narrow shot from bow and a rock or stone, thrown at an angle. It was commonly thought for nearly 2000 years, that a force was responsible for an object moving against its nature. The state of objects was one of rest, unless they were being pushed, or pulled, or moving toward their natural resting place. Most thinkers before the 1500s, considered it obvious that Earth, must be in its natural resting place. A force large enough to move it was unthinkable. Thus, Earth did not move. Galileo, however, argued that an object can move freely, in the absence of friction. Thus, only when friction is present, a force is needed to keep an object moving. Galileo, was also outspoken in his support of Copernicus, who proposed that the Earth is continuously moving around the Sun. In fact, one of Galileo's great contributions to physics, was demolishing the notion, that a force is necessary to keep an object moving.
friction is the force that acts between materials that touch, as they move past each other. Caused by the irregularities in the surfaces of objects that are touching. If absent, a moving object would need no force to remain in motion. Galileo performed a series of measurements, rolling a ball on an inclined plane. But why an inclined plane? Vertical motions under the influence of gravity, were too fast for him to accurately measure. He needed to slow them down. First, it's a ball rolling down an inclined plane. Second, a ball rolling up an inclined plane. Then, a ball rolling on a smooth horizontal. Here are his observations. When it's downward, the speed of the ball increases. The concept of gravity was still not introduced during that time. But we all know now that this ball moves with Earth's gravity. When it's upward, the speed of the ball decreases. Again, we can explain that the speed decrease observed by Galileo, was because this ball moves against Earth's gravity. On a level plane, Galileo observed that the ball decreased speed and then stopped moving. In this case, we know that the ball does not move with, or against gravity. So why did the ball stop moving? Galileo stated that if friction were entirely absent, a ball moving horizontally would move forever. No push, or pull, would be required to keep it moving, once it is set in motion. Galileo's conclusion, was supported by another line of reasoning. He described two inclined planes facing each other. Then a ball would be allowed to roll down from one side. Galileo stated, that the ball rolling down the incline, also rolls up the opposite incline and reaches its initial height. And even when the second plane was longer, and inclined at a smaller angle than the first plane, the ball rolling down the incline, also rolls up the opposite incline, and also reaches the same height as before. Now when the second plane was made horizontal, what do you think happened? Of course, the ball rolled, and eventually stopped. But Galileo insisted that if there is no friction, the ball will never stop. When the angle of incline of the second plane, were reduced to zero, so that the plane was perfectly horizontal, only friction would keep the ball from rolling forever. It was not the nature of the ball to come to rest, as Aristotle had claimed. Galileo stated, that this tendency of a moving body to keep moving is natural, and that every material object, resists changes to its state of motion. The property of a body to resist changes to its state of motion is called inertia. Again, when a ball is rolled across a countertop, and rolls slowly to a stop. How would Aristotle interpret this? What about Galileo? How would they explain what had happened to the ball? Aristotle, would explain that the ball stopped, because it seeks its natural state of rest. While Galileo, would state that the friction between the ball, and the table, overcomes the ball's natural tendency to continue rolling, or overcomes the ball's inertia, 
and brings it to a stop. What about during free fall? It is a type of motion where no other external forces, aside from gravity, influences the acceleration of an object. How would Aristotle and Galileo explain free fall? According to Aristotle, if you drop a piece of paper and a coin from the same height at the same time, the coin would fall faster and hit the ground first because it is heavier. But Galileo wanted to prove that the rate of fall or acceleration of an object is independent of their mass. For Galileo, if there is no air resistance, a feather and brick dropped together would hit the ground at the same time. In 1971, the famous astronaut David Scott proved Galileo correct in his famous hammer feather drop experiment on the moon during the Apollo 15 mission. Since there is no air in the moon, the objects dropped at the same speed. In the year Galileo died, Isaac Newton was born. By the age of 23 Newton, gave the world his famous three laws of motion. Together, Galileo and Newton discredited the Aristotelian view of motion and developed the theories that still form the basis of mechanics today.